when you get hold of the Nintendo Entertainment System. When you master Rob, the video robot, and meet the challenge of Gyromite. When you shoot the light-sensing zapper. When you play the system with the most arcade hits, you're playing with power. The Nintendo Entertainment System. Now you're playing with power. Welcome back, retro gaming fans, to the Vintage View Podcast. Tonight, we will be talking about Nintendo, 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 and I think Nintendo. Isn't that right, guys? You forgot Nintendo. Okay, sorry. We, we will be talking about Nintendo. Hey, look at the... This is the episode where you're talking about Sonic the Hedgehog, right? No. Get out. See that, see that guy over there? That's Andrew. He showed up now three times. See, see that guy uh, near uh, that one, right? That, nope, nope, nope. Right there, that one. That's Scott. He's the creator of our, uh, of our uh, lovely podcast. He's also our technical wizard. That, now he's up there. Yeah, I'm up here now. Now I'm down here. Up here, down here. <laughs> How about, you know what? How about I'm over there? Oh, I didn't move. <laughs> anyway, now we're just getting weird. All right, so Nintendo. Yes, Nintendo. 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 So, what do we talk about with Nintendo? First thing when I want to say is every time I see that commercial, what goes through my head is uh, Nintendo Entertainment System. Your parents help you hook it up. You guys remember that commercial? Yes. No. Yeah. No. I unfortunately I'm only 35, so I don't remember a lot of those commercials. Such young whippersnapper. That's why he's over there talking about the competition, which we already talked about. Yeah, yeah we already did that episode a few episodes uh, ago, actually. I think I was on that episode for like two hours. Yeah, yeah, we it talked too like much. Five. Yeah, that's what we're here to do. But when it comes to Nintendo, what can we add to the discussion that hasn't already been said? I like turtles. Um, naked lady playing cards. Okay, yeah. I mean, Nintendo did make playing cards. I'm pretty sure they didn't do that. They did, however, make a love hotel, so that's kind of weird. Yeah. So, really, if they did, well, they did make the love hotel. Are naked lady playing cards that much different? I don't see... They are entirely part of the same conversation at that point. Yeah. Yeah. But I'll, I'll tell you something, though. It's by far the oldest company that we're talking about, or we're going to talk about, because they're a thousand years old by now. No, um, 1880, I think, was something like that they got started. I could look it up, but I don't feel like doing that right now. Technical wizard and fact checker buddies, neither tonight. <laughs> wow. And yet I'm still the face that knows the place. Hey, you you know as well as I do, all three of us have a face for radio. Yeah, but only one of us has a voice for it, and that is definitely Sam. I mean, <laughs> you're not wrong. I've been told <laughs> that a lot, and I don't understand it. Um, a lot of people have told me that I have a voice for radio, and really, I, I'm just speaking words and things and syllables and, you know, using syntax and different things like that to make people understand me. 1889. Ah, finally, he fact-checks. Thank you. I will, I, 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 I will say one thing. I will say one thing. When it comes you said to it being twice, told, so you said more than one thing. I shut up. I work in a call center. We all know this. Well, the viewers don't, but now they do. I have talked with I'm people. Pretty sure that they already knew it. I have talked with people that are retired uh, broadcasters or station managers or whatever, and they have told me that I would be a very good on-air personality because when I'm working, not right now. I sound like an idiot. 
when I'm working, I actually have a pretty good radio voice, I guess. And I, and maybe Scott. because I'm clear and concise, not concise. I'm just clear and people can understand me pretty well. I don't know. Scott, as the uh, as as a victim of your uh, customer service voice, no, they're lying to you. Shut up. They're just trying to be nice. Hey, half the time, half the time when you were sitting next to me doing the same calls I was, we were whipping each other with lanyards. So you know. <laughs> okay, Nintendo. That, uh, Nintendo. Yes. Anyways. Um, <laughs> Already so, off the rails that we haven't even talked about Nintendo more than like two seconds. You two whipping each other at work. It, we we need to keep on track here, gentlemen. <laughs> I was gonna start mentioning. I was gonna start saying names and be like, "Whoa, I shouldn't say that. I shouldn't name drop in here." Uh, but anyways, so uh, as the youngling of the group, um, when you when you talk about Nintendo, first thing that comes to mind for me is gonna be you know the Game Boy. I had one. Uh, yeah. I had a lot of them. But hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. So he's going to pull up a Game Boy Color watch. Did, did you have this one? I did. Currently, I don't. Same, yeah. Did you have this one? Is that a a pocket? Uh... MGB zero zero one. So, I, oh, it is. It, it it says on the screen. It says pocket. Did you have the blue pocket? No, I never had a pocket. I had a regular uh, a OG. I did, had a did you have color the purple color. Like the purple color? No, but I had the green color. I didn't. It, since since the nineties, like never died and are coming back again. Can we please? bring back the see-through electronics i love these things aftermarket yeah, people are doing that because you can get like aftermarket uh nintendo shells that are see-through now scott you said green market. i want i want authentic ones do you mean the lime green or like the teal bluish green oh i got the lime green I, okay and I like everyone looking... else on the planet i am missing the back battery door <laughs> uh i have been looking for this for like a month, because actually longer. I've been looking for it since I moved in this place. Uh, did you have a Japanese copy of Pokemon Leaf Green? I've never had any Pokemon games. That's because you're a bad person, Sky. Wow. Such friend you are. I am your best friend, and that's the sad part. I love, I love how like, everyone says they're my best friend. Anyway, yeah, but I think I, I think actually I've ever said that. So anyway, going back to what we were uh, talking about, you know, Nintendo, yes. not friends. Uh, hey, as a hey, child, Scott. I had the hey, regular Scott. DMG, and then I had the Black Play It Loud after I, um, I broke my original one because I was an idiot kid. Yeah, you so, were. So yeah, I knew. But you I never had the. Color or pocket oh. as a child. Well, I knew you when when you were an idiot teenager. Can't say I knew you when you were a kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, and uh, Andrew's Scott. kind of an idiot adult. I'm always gonna be an idiot. But uh, Scott, during the little uh, uh, commercial beforehand, uh, it said mastered Rob the video robot. I'm a I, I'm a youth. Tell me about it. What what was what was Rob the Robot? A gimmick. Yeah. Rob was a gimmick to sell Nintendo's after the video game crash because they didn't want to position it as a video game system. They wanted to position it as an entertainment system, so they put a robot with it that will yeah. Anyway. Think about it. Gyromite, the pack-in game, was the perfect little sibling game. As as the oh, elder yeah. sibling, which sadly I'm not, you get to play the game, and you're here. Here is controller two. You get to do something now. Press A, press B. And you didn't need the robot. Yep. 
All okay. you gotta do is hit okay. hit B, hit A, hit whatever. Yeah. And that's okay. that's really um, all you had to do. So but, then can uh, you explain to me why Rob the Robot is uh in a big enough part of Nintendo's history then to be to qualify him to be in Smash? I mean, come on, if you if you looked like this, wouldn't you wanna be in Smash too? I mean that that's just that's just pure robot right there. That is just pure manliness. Exactly. That is that is an I, absolute giga chad. This is actually, I, I think, the Famicom a, one, but it because of the coloring. But it's got an NES controller right next to it, so I don't know or NES uh, game. I am going to start a bit of a controversy and say that Famicom Rob was so much better looking. The color looked better than gray and yeah. Well, gray on gray like on gray. yellow these days. Yeah. Never forget though that the uh, the NES was marketed as uh, being sleek and futuristic looking. <laughs> Back then it was. It looks like a toaster. It looks exactly like a toaster. <laughs> it, uh, uh, I, although, I, like, I mean, it, at least it doesn't have a jacket on it, like the PS Five. And what's worse is the top the top loader design. That one was kind of ugly. But you know what though? It was functional. Watch your mouth, young man. The top loader is sleek and sexy. I think yeah, you're blind. I said it. It's got the curves and the hump. I mean, and all it the certainly looks a lot better than the original NES. But it still looks goofy. I think the Super Nintendo looks goofy. The the SNES is yeah. definitely goofy looking. Fun fact: SNES and NES, just those words drive Sam crazy. Yeah, but I I, I I'll let it slide because it's him. Well, that and they um, Nintendo has gone on record as saying that's appropriate. Well, screw those fuckers. What do they know? They only <laughs> created the company and the consoles. I mean, I mean, I'm just saying, the guy who invented a GIF calls it a GIF, so... Yeah. You mean the guy who created it and he named it GIF because that's what it's called? I, I didn't realize it was spelled graphics interface format. Yeah, it is. I, I like well, computer here. graphics. Well, here, Scott, I have a... A gift for you that I keep meaning to send to you. The funny thing is, you could have actually given it to me when I was in town. Shut up. You knew we were meeting up. Yeah, and I couldn't find it. So, <laughs> yeah. I'm just anyway. going to start changing all the, J, all the G sounds to J sounds for this whole episode now. It's not the vintage gamers, it's the vintage gamers. That almost sounded the same. Scott's well, middle name is uh, Scott's middle name is Gary, so he's actually You don't uh, even know name my is, middle uh, name. Gary. That is not my middle name. Isn't it? It's Vidja James. Know. We're gonna play some Vidja James. Yeah, we're, we're gonna be playing Vidja James today. I'm going to go get some jazz for my car. Okay. We're not even talking about Nintendo. Sam's like, the, Sam's like, you guys can shut up. Go away. I'm this just waiting. Long. As soon as the word Nintendo comes up, I'll start talking again. Nintendo. Nintendo. You caught me off guard. All right. Fine. Yep. Good <laughs> job, boys. I swear to God, man. This is... We we always start out well and then we just get derailed. Scott, we never start off well. We we have twenty minutes of technical difficulties, and by the time we get into it, we've forgotten what we were supposed to talk about, anyways. Well, anyway, Nintendo. 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 Love hotels and is it Hanafuda? Yep, Hanafuda cards. Those are traditional Japanese okay. playing cards. 
Yeah, I didn't want to get murdered for pronouncing it wrong. Um, I mean, I might be pronouncing it wrong, but English speakers will understand, and Japanese people will be like, well, it's a white person trying to pronounce something, and they're always wrong. Look at those idiots. Japanese people like, they tried. Our words. Anyway, so let's talk Nintendo. What would. Let's start with with you, Andrew. What was your favorite? Well, no. What was your first console, and what was your favorite console, and why? First console was the Nintendo Entertainment System. I very distinctly remember as a child having the uh, the the dual pack uh, Super Mario Brothers uh, Duck Hunt game. Everyone had that. That's not very special. I, you know why? You want to know why mine was special? You want to know why mine was special? Because my uh, light sensing gun didn't work. You you pointed at a at a light source and it works every time. Uh, but my favorite Nintendo console. Do do portables count? Still a console. Yeah, the Nintendo 3DS. Okay, why? I did, it is my favorite console because it has uh, some of my favorite games on it, which are you know don't fucking judge me, you piece of shit. But uh, Pokemon, <laughs> uh, it has uh, the only version to this day of uh, Legend of Zelda: Ocarina of Time that I've been able to beat. Um, and it has Nintendogs. What? See, now I'm judging you. I wasn't going to judge you for Pokemon because it's popular, but Nintendogs, really? Yeah, Nintendogs. I had the, uh, I had the Labrador pack. Oh my God. It had, uh, it had a yellow lab, a black lab, and a chocolate lab, and... Had the black lab. I'm gonna step in and say I have both the Labrador for for the regular DS uh, because I had a chocolate lab and he passed away, so I made him a Nintendo Dogs, and then the the other one with corgis in it because I had a corgi and he passed away, so I have two Nintendo Dogs for the regular DS, and I'm standing by you, buddy. We're Nintendo Dog Bros. Now if they had Nintendo Odd man out, Scott. Now if they had Nintendo cats. They do. Do they? They do. Oh. Yeah. Yes. Nintendo it, dogs. It's not as it's not as good as Nintendo dogs because the uh, Nintendo cats, the they only have I think four fur colorations right now. Anyway, so Sam, what's yours? Your first uh, and, your, first and your love, your your favorite. First, <laughs> what's your first Nintendo love? console. My first love. Well, when I was in kindergarten, never mind. Um, <laughs> first Nintendo console was the NES. I'm trying to remember where I got my first NES. Because, like, growing up in the era where people were literally throwing them away, I can't remember where my first one came from. But I definitely, my first Nintendo was, was definitely the NES console. Favorite console, uh, that is difficult. And the problem with that is the fact that Nintendo makes their games so fun to collect. Because when the N64 came out and you're like, oh, it's not going to beat the PlayStation because it has cartridges. The cartridges are so fun to collect. And I don't know faster. why. Yeah, well, I mean, duh. But <laughs> even when they went to discs... They did the mini discs for the GameCube, and you're like, it's so much freaking fun. Look at this little disc. So Nintendo put a lot of thought into how, I guess, cute their media was. Anti-piracy. So, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anti-piracy, cute. It works. It works. But um, favorite to collect for or, like, favorite console to, like, you know, stick my nose in i don't know it's difficult uh for the record i would like to point out that i found my nes 
in a box in the back of my dad's closet when I was like, I think six. Underneath a stack of magazines. Next to the VHS. Uh, I'm kidding. I'm not. <laughs> I don't really want to know that. No. Uh, um, suffice to say, I would have gotten in a lot more trouble for what was on top of my the NES than uh, than what than if it had been a couple of magazines. Gross. Dad, why do these socks stand up on their own? Oh no! It was. Oh uh, God, no. Anyway, it was some Second Amendment stuff. So, my favorite console. Nope. Well, first, your first I, console, I, I, son. I was gonna get there, so hold on your panties. Well, my first console, as as talked about in previous episodes, wasn't NES. Um, I was fourteen at the time. My mom bought it for me for my birthday, and it was used because we were broke. Anyway, my favorite console is NES. And the reason why is that's, I mean, I had, I had an Atari beforehand and I love those games, but it was something I, I did infrequently. I didn't play it nearly as much as uh, I could have. Once I got the NES, that's when I started, you know, renting games. I started, uh, talking about games with my friends and everything else because, you know, I had something that was fairly current. And that's where I was introduced to role-playing games because, let's face it, before that, role-playing games were not that good. Even though Adventure for um, for the Atari 2600 is well-loved by the people who have actually played it, I never could get into that so with the art with uh the platformers namely mario brothers as well as uh role-playing games that's why the nes is my favorite and uh, one of these days i'm gonna do a quest where i play every single officially licensed game i'm not going to be stupid like some of these people that try to beat every single game that would take me for the rest of my life but yeah. Yeah, we're if you uh, if you know Scott the rest of his life is about the next forty eight hours. Really? Especially if he has Taco Bell. Especially when he has Taco Bell. We if you didn't listen to the ever. last episode, Sam was blaming the reason why we hadn't been doing an episode for a while is because I had Taco Bell and had to recover. But the truth is, well, we just didn't record What's an episode. The What's the truth, Scott? What's the, the truth? truth? Is he had Old Country Buffet? Oh. No, that would be a hometown buffet. Are they still around? No, That's a they're good gone. Question. <laughs> hometown buffet has been gone for like twenty years, bro. Well, in Tucson, yeah. Golden Corral. Golden I had Golden, Corral. I had Golden Corral a couple months ago. Ah uh, yes, because cotton candy is a dessert that we want. I had go- I actually had it in uh, Tucson when I visited. Anyway, you came, so, you came here just to eat it to, to eat it Golden Corral. No, you were that, in. You that were was in, our that was God our dinner. Taking, that was our dinner were, on our last God night before we came food. home. You you didn't go for Mexican food, dude. I went to Nico's. There is a place here that's almost exactly like Nico's. No, I, I, I mainly went to see you guys. Still there. Just remember, you bring great shame to, to your friendship. Game. No, I, I mostly came to see you guys. Anyway, back to Anyways, Nintendo. Nintendo stuff. Uh, fun fact, fun fact. Uh, the only two Zelda games that I've ever hundred like beaten completely are Ocarina of Time on the 3DS and uh, Link's Awakening on the Switch. You need to try Link to the Past. Link and then you need to play the direct sequel on 3DS. Uh, my goal worlds. is to... My goal is to, uh, when I get my Switch back, I want to play uh, 
Majora's Mask. And then possibly, if I'm if I'm feeling a little froggy, going all the way back and playing The Legend of Zelda. You know, my my Joy Cons had some stick drift, so I bought some controllers in Tucson. I didn't pick the color. Purple and yellow. The lady friend I was with had picked those out. By lady friends, he means someone he was paying to hang out with him. No. Nintendo Love Hotel. Ah. Giggity, giggity. All right. Bringing it back. Uh, <laughs> okay. I, I, I got a, I got a, I got a legitimate one for you guys. I got, I got a good one. Um, what is the first game on a Nintendo that you remember beating? Dude, I, I beat so many. I can't remember. I'm so old. I can't remember, but you know what the sad thing is? I'll tell you one game that, um, I, I, know that I have not beaten and it's a Herbal very time. basic game that everyone has done I've beaten Mario Brothers 2 and 3 have not beaten the first one because I cannot remember that stupid path in 8-4 yeah, <laughs> I can't yep. remember it to save my life for me it's uh, Super Mario World first one I beat and now whenever I go back and I try it I can get to Vanilla Cave 3 I think it is you know what the easy way to do it is get to the Star Worlds and go through the Star Worlds and go bloop, to the castle and get through the castle and beat it yeah 20 minutes uh, I'm not a speed runner okay. but you know <coughs> yeah, I don't... the next thing we see on the Twitch channel Scott speedrunning Scott Mario speedrun. games. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not gonna try Speed to speed what do I use on Saturday. You gotta you gotta uh okay. You don't remember the first one you beat. How about one that you've beaten recently? <laughs> um depends on how recent. Player's choice. Um, because earlier this year I was going through and I was beating Nintendo games and I beat quite a few of them. I think my favorite was actually Fester's Quest. Well, here's the real question. Are you referring to Nintendo games or games made by Nintendo? Scott, Scott, shut your face. Did you just say Fester's Quest? Yeah, yeah it was a fun game when I was a kid. It actually is, yeah. I didn't know this game existed. I love oh, the yeah. Addams Family. Yeah. Do 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 do. What 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 uh, what console is it on? NES. 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 All right, I'm gonna have to try and see if I can find it because I am gonna play the shit out of that. Come on, you work was in it? a in a pawn shop. You should have seen at least one or two go through. Um, I. You'd be surprised because the oldest console I have in my shop right now is either the. GameCube or the PS2? No, I have a PS1. I have a PS1 in my store. Weird. I still I still if you want you to save it, put it somewhere in the back until I have money for it to send you, and then you can send it to me, but I need you to get me a virtual boy. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Gentlemen, gentlemen, gentlemen. Did you just say that on a podcast that is going to air, Scott? What? Did I want a virtual boy? Telling telling him to save something that is for sale. He won't story. do it. He's he's actually an ethical person. Okay. Either that or his that, ass that can buy or, it and then right. sell it to me. That or, that or I'm going to buy it myself. I know. <laughs> hey, I can tell you what I want you to do, but I know you're not going to do it because... You're yeah, you're yeah, ethical, a, but at the same time, you'd buy it and then be, you'd hold it over and be like, "Look what I got." And be like, "You I, dick." 
I would honestly like okay, I would buy it. Uh, take a couple pictures with it, especially if I could, especially if I got my hands on a power glove at the same time. Oh my god! And then I would send it to you. See, I don't think it will ever show up in your store, though. I mean, I have had a power glove come through. Really? Yeah, that's weird. Uh, perfect condition. It was in uh, uh, in the original box and everything. The closest I've come is the little sensor bar. I saw one at a flea market, and I was trying to talk to the person, and they didn't speak a lick of English. And I'm like, uh, is that for the power glove? And they just looked at me like, I don't okay. know what you're talking about. And, okay. uh, you know, I know a little bit of Spanish, but I didn't know enough to strike up a conversation and ask them, you know. But, um, yeah, I wanted it, but I just couldn't strike up the deal. And that is strictly on me. I just, I, I love the uh, the thought of just just the concept behind the power glove. You know, Nintendo has always done things decades ahead of their time because power glove was their first foray into motion control, which admittedly sucked. Yeah. Yeah. Virtual Boy was their first foray into 3D, which sucked because it caused everyone headaches. And then and they got it right later. I don't know. 3DS still gives me headaches. Yeah, but the thing is, it works. It works the way it's intended. And then the motion control started on the Wii, did pretty good. Then it went. Then the uh, the Switch one, the Switch controllers. That's that's got it nailed down. I love Nintendo. I will say that my favorite thing about Nintendo is their willingness to let people do things with their properties. Do you guys remember the Donkey Kong cartoon? Oh, uh, yeah. They're also the most litigious company out there. They protect their IP like, you know, rabid hyenas. So what you're saying is that we're probably going to get we're probably going to get uh, season desisted oh. for this episode. No, we might. no, we're not. If, saying anything, if we do, you know, if if we if we were to get a uh, a season uh, a season desist, I want you to send it to me so that way I can get it put on a t shirt. <laughs> I was gonna say, I thought you were gonna say you're gonna frame it and put it on the wall. Well, absolutely, it's no, gonna, yeah, it, it'll go right here. <laughs> it'll go right here. Here's the thing: this is not a plug at all, but the Donkey Kong cartoon, I believe, is in its entirety on Tubi for free. Oh. I actually have not watched it, so I want to. Now that we're it's, talking about TV shows, what about it's Captain and the Game Master? What? That was not a bad show. Hey, how about this? The Super Mario Brothers Super Show? Yeah. That is also on Tubi. The Super Mario Super Show. And that one had I'm, some I'm Mario the... Brothers, and then, and then, don't, you can't forget, uh, Zelda. Excuse me, princess. I'm I did that a little surprised. too long, I think. <laughs> yeah, that was actually like almost made lots of spaghetti. I'm really surprised that of all the companies that Nintendo finally would settle down to work with, that they picked Illumination to be the one to be to do the new Mario movie. Hey, they did I was a like, good it's job with it, though. They did great. Uh, except for Chris Pratt. Charles Martinet should have been the voice. Martinet. Martinet. He retired from the voice. Sadly, now he's just yeah. a brand ambassador or something. I but think he, he was, was forced. But he I was in he was the movie, though. That. Yes, in the beginning. As Mario's dad. No. He was in. Uh, he was the guy that was playing. Um, I think he was playing Donkey Kong Jr. Yep. It was right after they finished the it was right after the commercial played. And uh Mario looks at him and goes, What do you think? Was it was the accents too much? And he goes, No, it's a perfect. Yes, but the thing is, he wasn't doing Mario's voice, but he was playing Mario's dad. No, Mario wasn't. And he Mario's also dad? provides the voice of Giuseppe and the unnamed father in several languages. 
Well, la di da. Thank you, Mr. Fact Checker. I want to go back to um, TV shows and game shows. Does anybody remember Video Power? I've talked with you about it. I don't remember much about it if, if, other than the name. All I remember is, familiar. yeah, these kids, it was kind of like a Nickelodeon show, but it wasn't on Nickelodeon, I don't think. Um, they had these kids, they did a quiz, and then they got prizes. Like, they ran around a maze with a Velcro vest on, and they could grab NES games and all that kind of stuff and, like, stick it to themselves and then run around and grab more stuff. As a child, that was the best thing in the world. Um, um, I'm, I'm just going to say uh, Secrets of the Agent Temple was better, but... Do you want to yeah, know who was executive producer? It was Saban, wasn't it? I am Saban. Freaking Mr. Power Ranger himself. Yeah. Mr. Hey, you, get off my cloud. But um, it doesn't say what channel. It just says it was on syndication, which means that it was probably on different channels depending on the different markets. It was okay. probably a, it was probably a local. It was, it was from local ninety channels. to ninety two. Oh yeah, no wonder I don't remember then. Yeah, you weren't even born. Eighty nine, sir. Eighty nine. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't say which. Put some respect was on. on my elder millennialness. Oh, is he? Hang on, hang on. I just have to put my hair behind my ear. I'm going to fight you. I'm going to fight you. We're going to throw hands. I have no idea what I was doing right there. Sam's going to help me. Well, I, I, I was going to say I don't have any hair to put behind my ears, but okay. Except for your avatar. Your avatar is living for you. Yeah, he's got a beautiful, full head of hair. There, is that better? What's the, uh, what's the Felicia Day song? Do you want to date my avatar? There you go. Yeah, no. Hers, yes. Yours, no. You haven't even seen yeah. mine. I'm pretty sure you still play as dudes. He's a kobold. Well, that he's makes a little kobold worse. wizard. He's a little lizard wizard. Anyway. Anyways, back onto the topic of Nintendo. So uh, I asked this before we started filming, and I'm going to ask it again just because I thought it was uh, anecdotal and fun. Scott, is the reason the magazine was called Nintendo Power because they said now you're playing with power in the commercials? Probably. I miss Nintendo Power. And you're going to have me look it up, aren't you? How did it get its oh. name? Okay, so now I'm the bad guy for making you do your job. Oh, look, yeah. you know what? It evolves from the Nintendo Fun Club, which was a newsletter. That's pretty cool. Um, kind of like how like Mad TV that. evolved from Mad Magazine. I don't feel like reading this whole thing. <clears throat> no. I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> what about that movie that was a two hour long commercial for a video game peripheral and a video game? Sam the knows wizard. what it is. Do you? The wizard? Yeah, okay, you did know that. Yeah. It was it was a it was a commercial it was a two hour commercial for the Power Glove. And Mario 3. And California. No one cares about California. That's why they're all moving that to other one, states. That one little kid did. <laughs> That's all he could say. I, I, saw, I saw the look on Andrew's face when I said, no one cares about California. That's why they're all moving to other states. And I saw the recognition, recognition on his face. He was like, yeah, I know. They're all moving to Tucson. Unfortunately. <laughs> anyway not to get political or anything but you know just it's hotter here than it is there stay there anyway so anyway. You, you know there's also a Nintendo Power podcast weird 
So I just how many, oh, I only care I only care if Doug Bowser was on it. I'm sorry, he's got the perfect name. Yeah. Anyway, um here's one for you though. How many other country or countries companies had an official tip line where you could call and they would literally tell you how to beat a game or a level because they're sitting there playing as you, as they're on the phone with you. Didn't Sony have one for a little bit? I don't know. I'm trying to say I'm Nintendo pretty sure had Sony had one. one. It was kind of cool. Yeah, no. Yeah, Here's I know Nintendo had one. You know, yeah. they had the 1-800 number for like repairs for Nintendo. One day I saw the Game Genie commercial. And I just figured the only number that I know is the Nintendo number because, you know, in the commercial, it kind of looks like it goes with a Nintendo. So I call him up and I'm like, hey, um, can I order a Game Genie from you? And if anybody knows the litigious situation that went on between Nintendo and Comerica, yeah, or Galoob or both, um, yeah. The lady, she didn't get on Nintendo about it, but she wasn't happy. I like the phrasing of that, on Nintendo. Yeah. I mean, how else would you be? Um, you should I say it on the podcast? It. Hey, fuck you, kid. Don't be fucking calling here. I'm going to... How many F-bombs can I get away with before we're demonetized? <laughs> we're monetized? No, just wishful thinking. Hey, in about 20 years when we get enough followers. Hey, maybe we'll get lucky. And like, I don't know. We'll be record. We'll be streaming on Twitch one day, just us bullshitting. And, you know, Doug Bowser will join the, ch the chat. And next thing you know, we have a million followers. Either that I or just, we I, have a million lawsuits. I just, yeah. I, just I, I believe in Doug Bowser. Well, I do too. He's a real person, but you know. You know what the funny thing is, though, they have a guy named Doug Bowser, and there was a, was it a modder or a, a Nintendo hacker? I think it was a hacker with the last name Bowser. So Bowser turned out to be a bad guy. A Bowser, I should say. Now I gotta Google that. Damn it. You know, okay, so I, I get Gary Bowser. I get that Japan is, you know, not Japan's not all just, you know, nerds. That's like ninety percent of the culture these days though. Because being a I, nerd is cool now. I don't know. We've never been letters to Scott, P.O. Box, I'm a dipshit. We've never been to Japan. We don't know how nerdy they actually okay. are over there. My it question be, is, though, it seems to be portrayed as a very large portion. My my question, though, like what I'm thinking, though, is with Nintendo being such a huge thing, is it not strange that they've never like crossed over with other big things over there? Like, why isn't there more Nintendo Dragon Ball Z stuff? Why isn't there more Nintendo? Um, what's the other one? Sailor Moon stuff. Why is there more Nintendo got four Do you know do you know what I wish they do again? Another Fortune Street. Or I think it's called Itataki Street or something like that in Japan. What's that? I'm gonna have to explain it, aren't I? Imagine Monopoly combined with the stock market and um if I remember Already correctly. Bored. No, it's actually really fun to be honest with you. Um but the Fortune Street game for the Wii that came out was half Nintendo characters and half Dragon Quest characters. Yeah, I just want another one because Dragon Quest characters. Uh, I, I should have known you were going to go to Dragon. You were going to mention Dragon Quest. Anyway, Scott's basically a slime. He's wearing blue. I mean, this is blue. This is orange. Okay, do you want me to have a stroke? Because that's what's going to happen. 
That's okay. Your wife's at home, so she'll find you. That that's actually kind of horrifying. <laughs> it is actually. I shouldn't say that. Like again, send your hate mail to Scott P.O. Box. I'm a dipshit. Hey, I'm only horrible right. to my friends, and we all know this, because you guys are horrible right. right back. That's moderately fair. Again, send your hate lit. No, never mind. Shut up. I'm just saying, though, like, isn't it interesting, though, that Nintendo is such a huge part of of Japan that they don't cross over with more of the uh, the other big stuff out of Japan? Like, why don't we have... Like, Probably because they are so so overprotective of their of their property, and rightly so. Because at one point, if I remember correctly, Mario was better recognized than even Mickey Mouse at one point. I mean, he's definitely well, I mean, cooler than Mickey Mouse. I mean, don't forget that the Prime Minister of Japan came out of a warp tube wearing a Mario hat to announce that the Olympics were going to be in Japan. It's a me, Prime Minister. I don't know. Like, no, I, I've watched that video a thousand times because it was just so good. Okay. Of like all these characters Mario, Goku, uh, uh, Sailor Moon, uh, uh, Doramon, all these characters coming together around a warp pipe. And then this warp pipe appears in the middle of the, uh, the Brazil Olympics. And the Prime Minister of Japan comes out. He's holding a giant red ball. He's wearing a Mario hat. I'm like, I'm like, that is appealing to your audience. See? Tell me that's not appealing to your audience right there. Oh, the, the Olympics are going to be in Japan? What's Japan known for? Anime and video games. Go. Well, I will say that Nintendo seems to be very regarded, or well regarded in uh, in Japan. But then again, so is Sega and all kinds of other stuff too. Yeah. Sony uh, and Mitsubishi and I'm I'm gonna go I'm gonna go a little off topic because we do that a lot, but I, I'm gonna announce it this time. Uh. In in uh, at, the, at the Japanese Olympics, uh, they they tried to pioneer. Work, work. Uh, they tried to pioneer anti um, anti fun time beds because the number one thing to come out of the Olympics isn't you know political prosperity or anything like that it is STIs. I remember that, Gross. and. Well, no. So here's here's why here's what makes it funny. Uh, they've done it so well. Like the ones in Japan didn't work that well, good, but they've improved it so well to the point that they are strongly believing that uh, during the Paris Olympics right now they're not going to be able to you know get no hanky panky going on because the beds yeah. are only designed to support up to like thirty pounds of each occupant. You know what I think? Not watch internet stuff because I mean, there's a lot of other places you can do it that doesn't include a bed washing machine yeah dryer let's not name those because everyone listening probably knows unless their kids oh, are listening Mario. and the kids are like what are they talking about mommy if there if there are children listening to this podcast there's some not great parents out there <laughs> hey they could have seen that oh they're talking about nintendo let's listen and then they have three yahoos being stupid, like we do. Three yahoos. Yahoo talked about Nintendo until about fifteen minutes in. Yeah. You know, we need to start actually coming in prepared with like a list of questions, topics. Yeah, we need to do that. But what's the fun in that? See, the thing is, we might accidentally get somebody to subscribe and listen and keep coming back because we don't stay on topic. And it's not like everything that we do, it's not like all of our off-topic stuff isn't at least anecdotally 
related to what we're talking about. Yeah, like hanky panky beds and Nintendo love hotels. Hello, See? they connect. Oh, I See? like how you're you're trying to put the two together and be like, yeah, this is why. Well, no, it, it, anecdotally, we got it started with talking about the prime minister coming out of the out of the warp tube, and then it's just it's funny. It's like that is the goofiest thing I could think of right now. You know, unrelated though. Do you know who is um, gonna be uh, some kind of big? Oh, he's gonna be carrying the torch for the the next Olympics. A black man that everyone knows and respects, Snoop Dogg. Barack Obama. See, you went. You immediately went Barack. I was gonna go Snoop. I was gonna say it's gonna be Snoop Dogg, isn't it? And you and you you would have nailed it, you know. Yeah. Well, Snoop Dogg was the ambassador for one of the Olympics. I think the last one in Germany, if I'm not mistaken, because I saw a car video on YouTube that had the lowrider. He rode into whatever Olympics in, and this dude was like, "Hey, is this Snoop's car?" And people were like, "Nope, never used it." And then they've got video of Snoop. Driving the car into the stadium. Unless, of course, I'm totally misremembering. But I, I think I'm right. I don't know. You might Back be mis- misremembering, you know, because, you know, dementia and all that, you know. In your What's old your age. name again, Mr. Blue? Who? I mean, that that's actually really common that stuff like that would happen, though. Um, losing, the, losing the vehicles and such. Uh, because, like, uh, for, the, for my wrestling fans... Uh, there's a show Gross. called WWE's Lost Treasures, and uh, Dominic Mysterio went to go try and find one of Eddie Guerrero's uh, lowriders, and turns out the way the way that it all worked was they would just they'd be in a town and Eddie would just look people up, and they'd call him and be like, "Hey, can we borrow your lowrider for an episode of SmackDown?" I know what you said, but I honestly thought you said an episode of Fat Cow. I'm like, yeah, I was totally. Is there milk involved? There is if it's an episode with Kurt Angle. Anyway, I was literally yeah, going the cow nothing. route, and you're going people route. Anyway, this had nothing to do with the Olympics at all. It was the VMAs. Uh, so, uh, yeah. so, but hey, it it, it was sort of kind of right. Oh. Uh. Not at all. Thinking of, uh, thinking of wrestling and Nintendo, uh, WWE No Mercy or WCW uh, NWO? See, the problem with those games were the fact that they were all really, really good. How is that a problem? Surprise. Scott has a problem. No, you said the problem with those games is that they're all really good. Oh. You said, how is that a problem? I thought you said, I've got a problem. I'm like, what? No, I said, how is that a problem? Yeah. Yeah, it's like, the that problem is, problem. is the games are really good. Like, like, how is that a problem in, in what world? Well, if you have to choose between them, the problem is choosing Oh, I forgot you were poor. Okay, Scott, like, you. you're, like you were rolling in the ducats. Hey, I, had, I at least had a job at one point. Uh, my choice was always going to be WWE No Mercy because it had Stone Cold Steve Austin in it. Gross. And he was my favorite in that in that period. Gross. Also, the he was, he was your but, favorite you know, actor. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell Stone Cold you said that, and he's gonna show up at your house and he's gonna beat the dog shit out of oh you. Boy. I don't have any in me. I'm kidding. Stone Cold wouldn't do that. Stone Cold's living his best life right now with his chickens. Let's let's face it. Wrestling is all actors and stuntmen. Send your hate mail to Scott at P.O. Box. I don't it's, like it's wrestling. It's well documented by I now. It's literally play. a men's soap, soap opera, and you guys know it. In the Scott, 80s, though, everyone thought of, it was I real. Go, I don't go out of my way to make fun of your Aunt more porks my, and your weird obsession with Terry, with Terry Pratchett. I don't have... I don't have Ankh more pork anymore. I don't know what happened to it. I gave it back to you, so. And I, it's I'm not a big Terry Pratchett fan. My friend that bought it for me is. Anyway, 
I do have a bunch when of games to... back there, but no one to play them with. When it comes to wrestling, I have to say the last time I watched wrestling, they came on shortly after it was supposed to start, and it was Vinnie McMahon saying, Tonight, our storyline has to be canceled. And anybody who knows wrestling knows why the storyline had to be canceled. Yep. But, uh, yeah, that's the last time I watched any sort of wrestling. Um, I just watched wrestling this morning, so... I don't know what that says about me in comparison. But uh, did you know that the uh, the first large public gathering after 9-11 was a taping of SmackDown? Yeah. So this has gone from Nintendo to the wrestling cast. Because we're talking about Nintendo wrestling games. Yep, oh. anecdotal. They're connected. Unlike the Olympics and the VMAs that my brain somehow mashed into fucking potato juice. Uh, all right. Well, we are wrap, getting close to time for us to wrap on this. Uh, Scott, like you got any final dogs. thoughts today? Brain not working. Thoughts not found. No. Um, Taco Bell delicious. Wow. Well, my, my final thoughts are I may not be loyal to any one video game console or uh, company, but then you I've always loved too. Nintendo I because I'm not loyal. I have I have rarely, if any, played a first party Nintendo game or even played an a Nintendo console that I did not like. Yes, I even True. liked the Wii U. It just failed because it did have a stupid name. It should have been called Wii Two or something like that. It just was too close to the original or to the Wii name and it failed. But I enjoyed playing it. It was kind of fun having a tablet you could do things on as well as the screen. So I enjoyed it. So, Mr. Sam, I am green eggs and ham. Sam, I am green eggs and ham. What's uh, your final thought? I kind of, I agree with Scott, oddly enough. I hate to admit it, but it's out in public now that, yeah, Nintendo consoles and especially their first party games, they're all really good. Um, and they were very careful about what things they were licensing to put on their consoles. So a lot of stuff until the Wii, <coughs> Nintendo, um, a lot of that stuff. Yeah, exactly. A lot of that stuff was really good as well. Um, I just think that they've been very careful. They've been fairly decent at what they put out and they're a very memorable company. I have to agree with both of you guys on that. Uh, my final thought is just that Nintendo has yet to truly miss when it comes to any of the stuff that they put out. Um, uh, whether it's their home consoles, their portable consoles, the Wii U, everything that they do, they do well enough to where you can say that it's not a failure. Uh one of, one of my favorite things that in regards to Nintendo is nothing to do with the games or the console, but it's the business practice behind it, where the CEO took an $8 million pay cut to ensure that he didn't have to lay anyone off because of the failure of the Wii U. Yeah. So if you if you really think about it, if you get down into the, into the nitty gritty of it, a company that wants to take care of its people as much as it wants to take care of its fans... They got they got uh, winners up and down the board. Well, you know what's funny? Um, both the CEO of Sony Computer Entertainment, PlayStation, and uh, the CEO of Xbox, you know Phil Spencer, they both are big fans of Nintendo. They both have admitted they have an they have a, a Switch or a 3DS or whatever at home. And I think on more than one occasion, at least one of them has said that uh, Nintendo, they don't view Nintendo as being a competitor because someone always gets a Nintendo console along with their console. And I think that's probably pretty accurate. Yeah. Why am I not? I'm, I'm sorry. This is completely off topic. And I, I hate doing this, but 
isn't didn't Phil used to be the major on the Nintendo no. uh, no, no, on the Xbox? No, he uh, wasn't Major Nelson. That was Larry oh, that was... Rib or something. Okay, I was like one of those guys was the one of those guys that's big in that stuff was the major. Anyways, back on it. Nintendo. This uh, this last what thirty minutes has been just kind of a love letter to you guys. We and love we're people, and we're, and we're we're very sorry. Yeah, we. Uh, yeah, there's that. All right. Well, those final those are our final thoughts. Uh, I'm going to try something new. A little bit of a sign off on here. Uh, I'm Andrew. This has been the uh, the Vintage View. Yep, and go ahead and visit us on our socials to give us your comments. Let us know what you think of this episode, what we could do better, everything. And uh, let us know what you want to see in the future. Sam? What? Watch these videos. (laughs) The one on the right is a video that we think that you know, you should watch, and so is the left one. So watch those videos. Watch anyway. them. Yeah, watch. All right. This, this has been the Vintage View. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.